This video shows how to repair an output amplifier in a Biomaster 6004 channel. If you like this video, please visit my blog for more information at biolover.blogspot.com or go to my website at www.biolover.com. Enjoy! Here you see the circuit diagram of one of the output amplifiers. Uh, essentially we have a feedback controlled push-pull design. So these here are the uh, uh, push and pull uh, transistors and they are con controlled by this biasing network uh, which is adjusted with this potentiometer. The great thing about this design is in case this potentiometer goes open circuit we don't have a catastrophic failure of the output. However, uh, what happened in my case, which is essentially the reason why I ended up making this video, is that I connected this point accidentally to ground with a screwdriver that wasn't uh, insulated well enough. I did wrap it with some adhesive tape but unfortunately not um, high enough and so when I slipped off the trimmer I pulled this here down to ground because I connected diagonally with the screwdriver to the metal bracket that houses the amplifier board. Anyway, so as that happened, um, then the entire uh, network here gets pulled down and so the, um, the uh, uh, PNP Darlington down here opens up and then it pulls down the emitter of this Darlington and um, uh, this one opens up and then we get a strong current flow through the entire output and that led to burning out these two um, transistors. What also happened is that uh, this resistor R21 uh, failed and this one went open circuit. So this actually led to some confusion when I replaced the uh, Darlingtons and I then had to realize it still didn't work. Um, the way I noticed it is that when this here is, ha is open circuit and these two Darlingtons are um, in good shape then you get about 40 volts here at the uh, base um, of the uh, NPN Darlington. That then made me think after I saw that that I should maybe also replace this uh, transistor because it's only rated to uh, 35 volts. So anyway, in the following I will show you how to replace these um, the output tr uh, Darlingtons, the uh, output resistors. I replaced both of them because I assumed they both saw a similar current and I also replaced this uh, transistor. So when the little accident happened and I realized that the uh, output transistors were damaged, first I went into full panic mode because I feared I would need to dismantle the entire Biomaster to uh, get at the circuit board and the output transistors. But then after panic subsided I realized that one can fairly easily uh, get the heat sinks out and essentially all you have to do is um, to unscrew the two screws, one here, one there. And so after you do that, so you see here I un unscrew the top one, right? So once they're completely out, you can actually push these uh, plastic insulators a little bit um, to the right here, away from the uh, metal bracket. So there are two uh, plastic protrusions on the insulator that go into holes that are in that metal bracket. So after pushing them out a little one can then actually move the heatsink upwards and um, completely access the um, Darlingtons that are mounted against them. So here you see the heatsink uh, pushed upwards and the two screws that hold the uh, Darlington are uh, out. Uh, you also see this insulator removed from it and so at this point now it's pretty easy you can simply pull the Darlington towards you and then uh, access the uh, solder points and replace it. Down here you see actually IC3, uh, the biasing Darlington, which is also mounted against the heatsink. So all the uh, PNP Darlingtons, right, this here is the 2501, um, these heatsinks they have the uh, corresponding uh, biasing Darlington mounted against them to uh, thermally stabilize the uh, output. This here is the uh, contact for the collector, right? The collector uh, directly contacts uh, to the uh, package. 
and so this here is bolted against this mounting hole of the Darlington and so this makes the uh, contact um, to the collector. The next step is to pull out the um, Darlington and so now it's uh, obvious it's easy to access the um, solder points and so we can put a new uh, component in. So here you see now how I uh, took out the second heatsink, uh, the NPN um, Darlington. So I should have also said of course that uh, I fried one of the back channels uh, while I showed the circuit diagram of uh, one of the front channels. So this here is the um, the right back channel. But anyway, here now I jam the screwdriver under the, um, the uh, plastic insulator from the side and I'll uh, pull out this heat sink and actually you can pull it, since this one is already gone, you can pull it a little bit to the side and so avoid putting too much stress on these um, switches. So here this is all a little bit dicey. They don't really want to come loose. But here, now it's coming. Okay, there we go. So I slide it off to the side and now it comes out. So now I'm using my Hako solder gun to get the uh, transistor out. Nice and clean. So now it's time to solder the um, the new ones in. And so this process takes a little time, so I'm going to speed this up a little. So here you see I put some heat uh, conductive compound on the um, uh, mica pad for the second one and so now I solder in the second the PNP so this looks all pretty good now it's time to put the heat sinks back in. All this takes a little bit of time, the entire process took like an hour maybe. <laughs> so, second one. And done. After I had the uh, Darlingtons back in, I fired it up and um, unfortunately then I had to realize this did not fully fix it. Uh, while the heatsink stayed cold, I was not able to adjust with the uh, trimmer any significant voltage across the uh, output resistors. Um, it occurred to me that I may have fried one of the output resistors and indeed it turned out to be the case. And so here you see uh, how to get to the um, output resistors. So it's actually possible to pull the, um, the uh, output circuit board up to an extent that one can actually pretty much access all of the components that are on it. Now this is a little bit of heart-wrenching activity because all these wires that, that go underneath this uh, metal bracket where this thing, where the output board sits in, um, uh, they get uh, strained quite a bit, but it is entirely possible. So it has been designed 
uh, in a way that um, one can actually do this. Um, it is actually possible to pull the entire board out on this side as far as on this side and then access everything. I did that actually to um, replace all the uh, electrolytic capacitors that are on this board. I thought while I had it up, why not do that too? And so the um, the output resistors, unfortunately, they are at the bottom end of this board, so you really have to pull it out as far as you can. And so you see here still the old one, um, and so now I'm going to show you how to uh, replace it. So here you see the detail shot uh, of the damaged um, output stage. These here are the two output resistors. This one here is the one that died, and uh, so I, I decided to replace both of them because the current uh, was the same in, in both of them, most likely. If you recall from the initial circuit diagram, we have really four resistors, 0.12 ohms, in the entire push-pull uh, leg of the, of the circuit. And so these here are the other two, and for some reason they use different components. These here look like standard modern uh, wire-wound resistors. These here somehow have this strange look. Anyway, so I decided to replace these two, but leave these two in. What I then also did is I replaced these three uh, electrolytic capacitors um, in all four of the uh, stages. This here is the uh, trimmer to adjust the uh, quiescent current uh, of the output stage. Here you see the old uh, resistors and the new ones that I bought at uh, newarc.com. Here you see after I replaced everything, uh, you see the uh, two new uh, output resistors. It's pretty difficult to get them in here under these cables because when it's it looks easy here, but it's pretty difficult with tweezers to um, maneuver these uh, resistors in, especially this one. The trick is to bend these uh, leads a little bit that they're hook-like so that the resistor doesn't fall out so easily. That gives you a little bit room for maneuvering. Uh, you also see the new uh, electrolytic capacitors, and I also elected to replace um, the transistor that uh, drives the push-pull stage. So this is TR8 uh, because I was uh, afraid that it may have um, briefly exceeded its uh, voltage rating of 35 volts, the, the old BC332. Um, so I had uh, some 2N2222 um, NPN transistors are lying around and they are a little bit beefier and so I put um, this one in here just to make sure that we don't have a uh, compromised transistor in this circuit. Here's a shot of the other three amplifiers and so here you see the uh, new uh, electrolytic capacitors. Okay, now it is time to give that quiescent current adjustment another try and this time with an insulated screwdriver and uh, so I elected to measure it across uh, both of the output resistors because um, that's easy to accomplish because one can simply connect to the red lead of IC2 and the brown lead of IC4 uh, with two uh, grabber clips and so one has uh, safe access to the current that is going through the output, the, quiet, the quiescent current. Uh, the manual prescribes to measure across this uh, resistor and of course that can also be done by simply connecting one uh, lead of the multimeter to the um, to ground and the other one to the um, a package of uh, IC4 which is the collector. But if you do like what I did you need to adjust for twice the voltage. right? So the manual prescribes uh, 7.2 millivolts across R19 and I uh, adjusted here for 14.4. I verified that by doing this measurement too, so this is a valid approach. Again, okay, here we finally see uh, how this adjustment is being done. Here I connect uh, to the um, brown and red leads, and here I have my insulated, now fully insulated uh, screwdriver. You also see I put here some cardboard in, to 100% make sure that this will not happen again. Um, 
and so I adjusted here to uh, 14 point um, well here it looks 3 but was sort of fluctuating. It's pretty difficult to adjust it very precisely with this uh, single turn uh, potentiometer here. Okay, it seems it's all good again in BioMaster land. This concludes my output amplifier repair video. I uh, thank you for watching. Good luck with your own uh, restoration project.